Have you ever wondered how those irresistible M&Ms, those little drops of joy, are made? Today, we're taking you behind the scenes to explore the magical process that brings M&Ms to life. Candy lovers, get ready for a sweet journey as we delve into the fascinating world of M&Ms production. From birthday parties to cozy family gatherings, we all have our favorite excuses to indulge in candies. And while there are countless candy choices out there, M&Ms hold a special place in our hearts. So let's uncover the secrets behind the creation of these delightful treats that have captured the taste buds of people all around the world. People love eating chocolate all year, but it can melt in hot weather. Luckily, the Mars Chocolate Company came up with a clever solution, M&Ms. These little chocolate candies have two parts. First, there's yummy milk chocolate inside, and second, there's a sugary coating that melts in your mouth. This sugary shell not only adds sweetness, but also keeps the chocolate from melting in the heat, so you can enjoy M&Ms in almost any weather. M&Ms are made in factories all over the world, but they taste the same because the workers follow the company's recipe carefully. It's like a chocolatey treat that's consistent and delicious no matter where you go. The chocolate candies are made from ingredients like cocoa liquor, cocoa butter, whole milk, sugar, corn syrup, and some other things that make them taste and look good. Each of these ingredients is prepared separately. The first one is cocoa liquor, which is like a thick syrup made from cocoa beans. It's the main ingredient in making chocolate. Mars Company makes a lot of chocolate candies every year. To keep costs down and have enough cocoa beans, they have their own cocoa farms. This way, they can get all the cocoa they need without a lot of hassle. When the time is right, the cocoa beans are harvested by the farmers on these plantations. Then, they load them onto trucks and take them to the chocolate factory, where they're turned into cocoa liquor. First, they take the cocoa beans to some experts who are like cocoa detectives. They pick out the good beans and say goodbye to the bad ones. But wait, those bad beans aren't really wasted. You could still make some chocolate out of them. The chosen beans then go through a machine that gives them a good cleaning. It's like a spa day for cocoa beans, where they get rid of stuff like dried cocoa pulp and pod bits that they don't need. Next, they weigh the beans and take them to a big grill, like a giant barbecue. Here they get roasted, and that's when that lovely chocolatey smell fills the air. Just think about how amazing that aroma must be. Roasting is like the secret recipe for making the chocolate taste so good. If they don't roast the beans just right, you'd notice the flavor. After their roasting adventure, the beans need to cool down. Once they're chill enough, it's time to crack their shells and remove any extra stuff. There's something special in those extra bits, known as nibs, which are like hidden treasures for making chocolate. So they keep those nibs aside because they're valuable for making your favorite chocolate treats. The nibs and cocoa beans go to a big machine that's like a super squeeze. It presses them to get out the cocoa butter and fat. What's left is a paste that's kind of like regular butter. This cocoa butter paste is set aside and we'll come back to it. Now, the rest of the chocolate, which is basically dark and not sweet, gets some special treatment. They mix it with that cocoa butter paste. This is the secret to making chocolate so smooth and creamy. They heat it up and cool it down a few times to make sure all the butter melts and blends perfectly with no lumps. Once it's cooled, they add lots of milk and sugar to the mix. They give it a good stir, and that's when it turns into sweet, creamy milk chocolate. Now, it's ready to become those little round balls that we all know as M&M candies. Are you ready for this next part? A sizable depositor device equipped with a nozzle is filled with the chocolate mixture via pumping. It is dispersed from this nozzle onto a broad, flat molding sheet that resembles a big tray with several holes in the size and shape of an M&M chocolate candy. The molded chocolates fall from the molding sheet into another conveyor which moves them from the depositing area to a chilling area, thanks to an integrated conveyor system that forces the sheet to rotate as the chocolate is poured into it. This is where the heated, semi-solid chocolate is allowed to cool and solidify. The chocolates are moved to the next station, where they are covered in sugar once they have cooled and solidified. The following stage is known as panning. It is carried out in a hollow machine that has multiple sprays attached to it each of which is connected to a container of liquid candy. Periodically, 
This pre-made liquid candy, which is created by heating sugar and corn syrup, is sprayed on the chocolate. The machine's wide surface area makes it possible to evenly cover each chocolate ball with the liquid candy. The chocolates receive at least five coatings of this liquid, sprayed one after the other at a time, allowing the sugar coating to solidify and dry completely between applications. The chocolates are covered in a final syrup coating that consists of sugar, corn syrup and colouring once they have been satisfactorily sprayed. The resulting syrup in each spraying batch has a distinct colour that matches a separate M&M colour. The chocolate factory's multiple panning machines allow for the simultaneous spraying of separate batches, resulting in the simultaneous creation of all the colours of candy and a faster production time. The freshly sprayed candies are then left on a flat conveyor for a little while to allow their shells to solidify before moving on to the next stage. At this stage, every colour of chocolate candy is mixed together to create a mixture that includes orange, brown, blue, green, red and yellow candies. They are then placed in front of a unique device that delicately imprints the iconic M on each one without shattering or cracking the fragile sugar coatings. Every hour, up to 2.6 million candies are inscribed, and every day, over 100 million are done so. 2.6 million every hour is absurd. Consider how quickly that machine is operating. When the candies are ready to be packaged, the packaging machine receives them after branding and weighs them before pouring them into branded M&M bags. These candies aren't, however, grouped arbitrarily. Precisely 25% of orange, 25% of blue, 12.5% of brown, 12.5% of yellow, 12.5% of red, and 12.5% of green sweets are contained in each bag. Colour experts examine samples of each colour to make sure they are all the correct hues. They are also in charge of keeping an eye on the candy's colour trends. The chocolate-filled bags are then heat-sealed and packaged into M&M boxes before being shipped to retail locations across the globe. Some of the largest chocolates ever made are the result of the Mars Corporation, which is among the largest makers of chocolate in the world. These consist of, among other things, M&M's Mars, Twix and Snickers. Every chocolate lover's journey has included all of these chocolate candies, which are still marketed in large quantities all over the world despite having been around for many years. But M&M's have unique qualities all their own that set them apart from other Mars chocolate candy. These little round chocolates are enjoyable to eat for a variety of reasons, not the least of which being their seasonality. Which M&M's are your favourites to eat? And what is your favourite thing about M&M's? Comment down, those orange ones are my favourite.